Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, upon popular request, we're gonna watch Muhammad and Medina in the Bible by Many Prophets One Message. Up until now, I have to say that I don't find those claims about Muhammad in the Bible too convincing. It reminds me very much of the Christians looking for Jesus within the Old Testament. Who talked to Moses? Who was the burning bush? Of course, it was Jesus. If you ask the Christians, every single entity within the Old Testament is Jesus, including God, of course. Therefore, I come from a biased perspective of course, but up until now I didn't find the argumentation for Muhammad in the Bible too convincing. So let's see if this video can change my mind. Let's have a look. The 42nd chapter of the book of Isaiah in the Bible clearly foretells the coming of an Arabian prophet, specifically Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Isaiah describes itself as a prophecy about the future. God states that, the former things have taken place, and new things I declare. God starts the chapter by drawing our attention to a very special person that he will send. He describes this person as, My servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. At least three of the names of the Prophet Muhammad are mentioned. Yet again, I do see how Muslims could interpret this as the coming of Muhammad. But keep in mind, this has been written roughly 700 years prior to Christ. And therefore, of course, the Christians interpret this as the coming of Jesus. I'm not saying who is right, who is wrong here. But you would have to agree that those verses can be interpreted in all kinds of ways. Servant, chosen one, and in whom I delight. Isaiah is originally written in Hebrew. Arabic and Hebrew share a lot of common words because they are both Semitic languages. Isaiah uses the Hebrew word ebed for servant. The Arabic word for servant is abd. Prophet Muhammad is known as God's servant. In Arabic... Guys, I don't want to dismiss everything that this video claims. However, we have to stay critical. And servant of God is, of course, not an exclusive title to Muhammad. Many prophets have been called the servants of God. Chosen one is Mustafa in Arabic. This is another of the names of the Prophet Muhammad. The one in whom God delights in shows that this person is beloved to God. Habibullah in Arabic which means beloved of God. Oh. Yet again, beloved of God, the chosen one, all of those titles applied to other prophets as well. And of course, as well to Jesus. In Isaiah, God also reveals the location of this special person. He states, let the wilderness and its towns raise their voices. Let the settlements where Kedar lives rejoice. Out of all the nations on earth that God inspired Isaiah to mention, he chose to highlight Kedar's location so we should pay special attention. Throughout the Bible, Kedar and his sons are linked to Arabia. For example, the book of Ezekiel tells us that Arabia and all the princes of Kedar were your favorite dealers in lambs, rams and goats. In these they did business with you. In Isaiah, God, in these they did business with you. Okay. In Isaiah, God goes on to narrow the location down further to a specific city within Arabia. He states that the people of Selah should sing for joy. Let them shout from the mountaintops. The place Selah pinpoints the exact location in Arabia. The place being spoken of is the city of Medina in Saudi Arabia because Selah is the name of a famous mountain in Medina. Okay, this is more convincing. Medina was the city. As I said numerous times, guys, I'm giving you an honest reaction. So if something doesn't sit right with me, I will say it. If something, however, is convincing and impressive, I will say it too. An important point worth mentioning is that historically, we know there was a presence of various Jewish tribes in Medina before sure. the advent of the Prophet Muhammad. 
both Jewish historians and Islamic history records this fact. The question then arises, why were there numerous Jewish tribes within Medina? The answer is that the learned Jews were aware of this prophecy in Isaiah and were anxiously awaiting the coming of a new prophet. Fair enough, I researched this and I know that it's factually correct. The Jews truly were waiting for another prophet. Of course they were, because they rejected Jesus as the Messiah and hence they were still waiting for a prophet, but they couldn't believe that this prophet would come out of Arabia. Islamic history records the fact that whenever a dispute arose between the Jews and the Arabs in Medina, the Jews used to taunt their pagan Arab neighbors by saying, When our Prophet arrives, we shall obliterate you. The Quran also affirms this. God says, Is it not a sign to them that the learned men of the children of Israel knew it as true? Fair enough. Absolutely correct. In Isaiah, God informs us that the special person will bring something new. Mankind is told that we will... Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the ends of the earth. The statement a new song means a new law, a new way of worship. This is exactly what Islam represents. The emphasis on the new song. But is Islam truly a new song? Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Because if I look at it, if I look at the Quran, what I find is that the Quran comes as a reminder that Islam, the submission to God, is truly the one religion that started with Adam and went through all the prophets until Muhammad. This is the perspective of the Muslims. This is the perspective of the Quran. This is Islam the way that I understood it. So as a new song wouldn't be correct. Here is singing the praise of God all over the earth. The Quran opens with the statement, Praise be to God, Lord of the worlds, and is recited by Muslims all over the world during prayers every day. The new song cannot refer to Jesus because he did not bring about anything new. Rather, he confirmed the law of Moses that was already there. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus... Not exactly right. I personally do not believe that Jesus came to abolish the law like some Christians do. However, Jesus came to clarify as well and to remind the people of the true worship of God. This is why Jesus went mad at the Pharisees and discarded their man-made practices that they infused into their religion. So no, he didn't come with something new, but neither did Muhammad. Muhammad came as well with Islam, with the submission to God. God, which, if we believe Muslims, if we believe the Quran, is as old as Adam. Yet again. Jesus said, Think not I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I no. am not come to destroy, but fulfill. Exactly. Jesus obeyed and followed the law of Moses throughout his life. Jesus didn't sing a new song. He sang the same song of Moses, the Torah. Moreover, the disciples of Jesus also follow the law of Moses. But again, even from an Islamic perspective, he comes with the Injil. I truly do not agree with this video. Even after Jesus departed, in the book of Acts, we are told that the disciples looked to the Torah for guidance. For the law of Moses has been preached in every city from the earliest times. In Isaiah, God emphasizes the universal mission of the coming person by mentioning that he will be made a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles. Gentiles means non-Jews. The Quran confirms the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent to the whole of mankind, Jews and Gentiles alike. In the Quran, God tells us, we have sent you, O Prophet, as a bearer of glad tidings and a warner for the whole of mankind, but most people have no knowledge. The verse in Isaiah cannot apply to Jesus because in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. This is absolutely correct and we had discussions about this in detail in my comment section. However, my argumentation was and still is to this very day, of course, that yes, it is correct. Muhammad came for the Gentiles. However, Jesus is accepted by so many Gentiles as well. And therefore, directly, indirectly, he is a light to those people too because the Christians are non-Jews. The Goyim, they are not Jews. 
Jews. They are the Gentiles and they do follow Jesus. Now we can have the discussion, of course, if they truly follow Jesus or if they have another man-made interpretation about Jesus. But nevertheless, those people accepted Jesus as their light as well. And this is why, yet again, I have to say those verses are very, very tricky to interpret. You will have Christian scholars that say one thing, then you will have Jewish scholars that say something totally different, and in the end you will have Islamic scholars that say something completely different. Yet again, this is a very tricky subject, and for me personally this video doesn't go into depth. In Isaiah, God further states that he will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths I will guide them. The pagan Arabs at the time of the Prophet Muhammad fit this description perfectly because they had not been sent a messenger prior to Muhammad. The Quran bears witness to this. God states that Muhammad was sent to warn a people to whom no warner has come before. The verse in Isaiah cannot apply to Jesus because his people, the Israelites, had already received a multitude of prophets from God. That is fair in enough. In Isaiah, God emphasizes that this special person will be sent to those who trust in idols, who say to images, you are our gods. The whole of Arabia at the start of Muhammad's prophethood consisted of idol worshippers. Again, this cannot be a reference to Jesus because his people, the Israelites, were monotheists and not idol worshippers. Moreover, Jesus explicitly told his disciples to stay away from the idol-worshipping Gentiles, the exact opposite of what God prophesied in Isaiah. The Gospel of Matthew tells us that these twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions, do not go among the Gentiles. In Isaiah, God states that this special person will be a warrior. This is actually very interesting, especially after watching Blogging Theology. Paul Williams said as well that the early Christians didn't set out to convert the Gentiles. And this would, of course, confirm exactly that statement. This is something that I just learned recently. Very interesting. Yeah. And will go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yay, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Throughout history, God has dealt sternly with those who are sent guidance and persist in disbelief. I agree. This would really apply to Muhammad because he was a man of war and Jesus was not. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had to engage in many battles with the idol-worshipping yes. enemies of God and ultimately prevailed against them. By comparison, Jesus did not triumph over his enemies. According to Christians, he was crucified by them. Moreover, Jesus wasn't interested in fighting. He was not a man of war. He was a pacifist, according to the Bible. He said such things as, For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. And, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight? The statement for all who draw the sword will die by the sword doesn't necessarily has to be interpreted as something pacifistic. It simply is a fact. I researched a lot about samurais and ultimately they would agree with this statement as well. And there were no pacifists by any means. It is simply a clarification that if you want to go down the way of the sword, you will die by the sword. In Isaiah, God gives us a list of momentous achievements for this special person. Chief of these is that the idol worshippers will be turned back in utter shame. Not only did the Prophet Muhammad conquer Mecca, the pagan capital of Arabia, but by the end of his life, in just 23 short years of prophethood, Arabia had shunned idol worship and now worshipped the one true God of Abraham. This cannot apply to Jesus as it was Christians themselves who were humiliated and greatly ashamed for hundreds of years after Jesus. They were persecuted at the hands of the Roman Empire who were idol worshippers. They executed some of the apostles of Jesus such as Peter and Paul. Christians were tortured and even fed to the lions. Finally, Isaiah closes with an admonishment from God. Hear you deaf Look, you blind and see. You have seen many things, but you pay no attention. Your ears are open, but you do not listen. Which of you will listen to this or pay close attention in time to come? It seems clear that the deaf and blind God is talking about in this verse are those who reject Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Who among you will heed God by acknowledging him? Who will listen 
and pay close attention in time to come. All right, and this is it for today's video, long enough as it is. I came into the video extremely critical admittedly, but as I said in the beginning, I come with a bias, of course. I come with a bias seeing what Christians have done to the Old Testament, and therefore I have to be supremely critical in order to truly understand what is going on and what the truth is. Nevertheless, after watching the video, I have to admit that certain passages of it were very convincing after all. I always admit it, man. I said it before. If something is convincing, no worries. I will say it. If something, however, doesn't sit right with me, as I said, I have to be critical about it in order to really seek truth. Otherwise, I would just be pleasing people, and this is not the intent of this channel. Even back in the day, when I was doing vegan videos, or anti-vegan videos, or pro-Bulgaria videos, anti-Macedonia videos, no matter what the case may be, I always shared my perspective. So if you like it, guys, tag along. If not, no worries, you're gonna find another channel. I am sure there are plenty of other channels on YouTube. Anyways, if you like the video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support me via Patreon, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. I truly appreciate it. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.